I've been looking for you. Wait. Why me? You're that guy with the mean thoughts, smelling up the whole neighborhood. Oh, oh, dude, that's not me. That's like some other guy lives like three blocks from here. I'm not the guy with the mean farts. I'm the guy with the mean cards. All right, so before this video starts, please leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. Also, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. All links will be in the description. Now, let's move on with the video. Graydon. Deploy melee, destroy an enemy unit with a bounty. Tribute 5, boost self by that unit's base power. So this card used to be a auto-include with the wild card leader ability, which they then later replaced with these two cards per turn leaders being removed from the game. So this card has kind of faded away slowly with the whole bounty archetype not being as good as, you know, it could be. And yeah, that's kind of like the downfall of the bounty archetype. And in general, like the bounty archetype was at the start of like Syndicate. And when it first got introduced, one of the most powerful archetypes in the game, because it wasn't as limited as it is now, because you're not only able to create one bounty for your opponent's side of the field, which obviously makes you sort of have to play for every turn and not just be able to board wide, which you were able to do before all these nerfs happened. And yeah, Graydon is one of the cards that's obviously affected by this and the entire bounty archetype. And I do like going back to this bounty archetype because it is kind of a funny, like very strategic way to play the game. And yeah, you love to see it. And I'm just gonna build a deck around it. So the deck I'm playing is Lined Pockets. Now the reason I'm playing Lined Pockets is that because it gives me extra coins on things like Fist Deck, especially Slander is really, really strong with Lined Pockets. And then we can also have like five coins if we need them to, you know, like give us some extra coins for a kill or something like that. Also giving us extra coins on Payday and Dip in the Pontar. Dip in the Pontar I run as a one-off since it's not the best card, but it works with the Bounty Archetype well enough that it can be run in this sort of deck. Then I have a little bit of a Poison package with Morale and obviously the 4P Bronzes with Gellert Blindheim and myself Poison. Abomination with the Salamandra Hideout, of course, as well. Then we have two Tall Punishes in Morales and Graydon. Uh, Morales is the reason I'm not playing the Kalkstein, because I would use Kalkstein for like a Purify on something like a Griffin Witcher against Northern Realms. But I thought with Morales, I could just be able to, you know, damage or like kill it instantly with that six tribute. Obviously, I have to work for that six tribute but that shouldn't be too bad. Then I also run Madame Luisa and Savola, just being very good finishers on top of things like Jacques Miraculous Child or just Jacques the Aldersberg. And as consistency, I also run Vivaldi Bank. And as our Java to protect things like Caleb Menge and things like Horse and Freak Show, because those cards just need protection as they are very simply dealt with. And yeah, that is the deck. I am not sure how well it's gonna do in this current meta. So let's just try and find out. All right, who are we facing here? Ursine Ritual. Okay, that's that's not terrible. Our poison won't get much value, I think, here, but we should be able to get somewhere with this at least. Okay, I don't want these paydays, I think. Paired up with this, this could play for a lot. Morels won't be that great here as well. I don't think I need these paydays, actually. Okay. No form of bounty in this hand. That doesn't feel good. So I guess I'll just play this guy for the moment. All right, I'm guessing that's the Ceres. Yep, that is indeed the Ceres. Not too fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go Abomination. I'll pay the tribute, and I'll go. Uh, I'll go for the failed experiment next, and move the poison. Oh, that the problem is the order is so. Uh, it's one turn of order. I do lose a coin there still. No, it's okay actually. Okay. There's Berna. So already this guy drew pretty well, you could tell. <laughs> Drawing this and Berna is probably one of the best opening hands. How many of these did he get? What did he discard? He discarded a Gutting Slash. That's fair. I'll go for the failed experiment here. And am I going to spend the coin or give this damage? It's actually quite a big one. I think I'm going to spend the coin here. Keep this alive. And this is a good, this is a decent spender in this round as well, because we can just give bleeding, which he kind of can't really interact with. Take care of your blades and they'll take care of you. Or we could just poison this guy now. Nah, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I think I'm just going to stick with the fact that I can just 
poison burn a brand here and get an extra coin through my leader ability. Okay. Not much value on his blue boy there, but he's probably going to use his three leader charges here as well. Yeah. So I have to play Louisa now. I think I can I can get away with playing this right now. And I might spend for the Louisa here. So I, I need I'll keep three coins in my bank here. I'll go two cards down if I need to, by the way. Guy is not having any of it. I feel that. I'll just go Louisa here. And I'll probably yeah, I'll probably have to just play Savola at this point. I need to force out good cards out of him. Oh wow, he's actually given me the the round here. Yeah, I'll just I'll, I'll just go for Savola then. Okay, I think I don't mind the long round here. Even if we are a card down, I think with the help of our uh, mid ranginess and our slanders and stuff, we can definitely get a lot of good value out of these uh, freak show and all the other spenders. Because like his heat wave and his curse of corruption shouldn't be that. Significant. Okay, I still do need something that gives me bounty. Okay, I've yet to draw a single bounty giving card. That's not great. But we'll just have to see. I mean, he has very explosive cards still left in his deck. He hasn't spent too much to be this many points up in round one. He did use an Aeromancy though, so he, he might have to fish for Lippy here. But I think the long round is definitely okay for us here, especially with things like Gellart to keep units high and out of like Curse of Corruption range in the sense of that we can curse like give Gellart to something like a Azar Javid or so because like Azar Javid might just be my first play here but I do need I do need that Caleb Menge and I do need some Slanders as well definitely need those definitely need those because his Bear Witchers are going to be worth a lot to kill okay we get the Jack I definitely need a better card than this. There you go. Love to see it. So we don't have Gellart, but that's okay in my opinion. We can still get him off of the Valdi Bank. Then I might just open... I either open with Azar or Jacques. I'll probably open with Azar. Azar front row seems to be good. What is it? Okay, I could just go ahead and kill this right away with my... Freak show, but I'm not sure I actually want to do that. I could go ahead and morels it actually. I think morels is actually fine here. I'll play morels back row. There's a quartermaster. I think this is my turn to play the Javed now. This this dip in a pontar is actually going to be worth quite a bit of points. It's actually going to be worth a huge amount of points. He's playing two quartermasters because of a lockdown. That's funny. Shows how desperate the people have become. That's a pretty low tempo gunning slash. Alright, I'll force him to use this. There's not going to be a very high unit in his deck anymore, I think. Or like force him to maybe like try Curse of Corruption here. Because if we are able to order kill this, it's actually really powerful. That's a gunning slash gone. That's very good for us. Oh, sorry, not gunning slash, uh, stunning blow. Alright, his dog just comes out now, which is actually also really good for us, let's say. So here is the poison on the quartermaster. I do like that. Okay. So he spent his removal quite poorly here. His, his removal played for very little, actually. And this is probably his highest base strength unit. So I'm probably also just going to go Graydon on this, right? I feel like Graydon on this is fine. I'm not going to spend the... I don't think spending the tribute here is worth it. We just need to put his units out of their misery, basically. Like, this is just good for us right now. Our situation is here. We're playing, like, low points. He has a bunch of tall punishes. And he's giving us a lot of units as well. He's playing Olaf. Oh, wow. Oh, he played... Oh, God. I was not expecting him to play Olaf here, to be fair. So, every coin we get here is worth a bit. So, I'm just going to go ahead and use my Freak Show then. And kill the Skeld. Gives us the coins back, which is nice. Actually gives us, I think, an additional coin there as well. And we're up a few points. We still have this Jacques de Aldersberg. Goes for Oneromancy into the Ceres. That is going to be a bit of points, though. But the good thing about this 
is that we can kind of spend funnily here, right? So if we use three coins on, oh, this is wait, okay. So I ask you, I, this is this is where the strategy of this deck is is very complex. So I'm spending three, and I'm gaining seven. So I don't really want to do that, do I? I think I'll just go ahead and do this. Hit this a bunch of times. Oh wait, no, then I, okay, then I do this. Get my coins back online. Kill this. And I'll keep my coins. I'll keep, I'll keep my coins. I'll ch just chill with my coins because I still kind of need the bank to hit the, hit something good here. Slander would be insane. If I hit Slander off of bank, that's actually going to be game winning, I think. Because then I can just board wipe him almost. Yeah, this Azar Javid kind of wins us the game here, doesn't it? Azar Javid definitely wins us the game here. It's ridiculously powerful. Oh, and this Bear Witcher is dead, right? This Bear Witcher is super dead. Like, he can't do anything. He has a bunch of tall punishes. We might actually just keep it alive, to be fair. So we're just going to go ahead and spend here. And we're going to use some coins on our leader here as well to kill this. Go ahead and kill this bear, which gets eight coins out of that as well. That is very good for us. Let's see what Vivaldi Bank gives us. I honestly think I'll take the coins here and just go for a Salamandra Abomination. I could also go for Gellert. Nah, I think we lose too many coins there. So, yeah, that seems pretty good. I'll, I'll actually just spend so I don't over-profit with Jacques as well here. That feels good. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. Oh yeah, he has... Okay, so he's playing the Olaf variant. That's interesting. So we're just gonna go ahead and... Give this the tribute. Oh, I actually shouldn't have done that, right? Yeah, that was a mistake. I hope it doesn't matter. Because I did overspend there, I think. Yeah, I did overspend. I'll spend once here. Alright, I think we got this, though. This should be perfectly fine, even... If we just mis misplayed there. Yeah, spending three coins there was kind of unnecessary. We spent three coins to do nothing. So yeah, the long round against the Lippy deck is very, very good for us. Even without the Olaf. He would have had to play the Olaf early, though. All right. Woodland Spirits. Uh, the armor on these Andrego Warriors is actually very annoying. But I think with the help of, like, poisons and stuff, we are actually able to do a lot of not, like, damage to him. Like, this is actually not a bad matchup, I think, for us. Okay, I think I can drop one Executioner. It's not going to be that useful. Gellard and Abomination is a very good combo, so we're probably going to keep that. I think in general this hand's not bad. I, I want to get rid of the Jacques, but I don't think it's worth getting rid of the Jacques. I might get rid of the Fist Tech, though. Payday could be very good as well. Okay, I'll keep I actually keep Payday here. Because it can take out one of his engines, and that's very good for me. I'm right, just going to start off with the Executioner, so I have one of these established then. Okay, so he goes for the Larva. Dip in the Pontar helps us out massively here. Okay. That is a tad bit annoying. I do get a lot of coins if I kill this, to be fair, though. I do get a lot of coins. I could kill this, technically. I do have also a lot of ni like nice tall punishes in my deck. So I think I do this. And kill it, right? I think this is fine. Like, we're getting 13 coins, technically, but, like, we're getting 9 coins. We have 9 coins in the bank now. And we kill this big card. And it was very cheap to do that as well. Like, that was very... This is, like, this is why this archetype was so good at the start of the game. Like, it was ridiculously powerful. It was one of the most powerful archetypes within the game. So I'm gonna give 2 bleeding to this so I don't... Off ah, do I wanna... I think I have to kill this, don't I? I feel like I have to kill this. This is actually I need I need round control here, definitely. This is a Kiki Queen, uh, Kiki deck. But getting rid of both of these in round one is actually very very bad for me. Now I might have actually I could have kept the beast alive. That might have been a bit too overcommittal, to be honest. Yeah, that might have been a bit too overcommittal. Spending both of my spenders feels a bit bad. But being able to bleed him now doesn't feel terrible at all, especially if I have, like, a Graydon or something. Oh, I do have a Spender as well. Okay, that's very good. Mm -hmm. So keeping Gellart here I think is fine. Morale's also good. 
This doesn't feel bad. This hand does definitely not feel bad. Can I win with this hand though? I can win. I can go short round Madame Louise and Savola and try and get a win through that. Okay, let's try it. I'm not gonna mulligan here. I think all these cards are good for what I'm trying to do this round. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use. Uh, I'm not gonna go at Abomination just yet. I think. Or should I? I should. I, th I should probably go location first. Play it back row as well. And I'll probably. Uh, do I go Lackey here actually? Or Mage. Mage is pretty nuts as well. But we're, we don't have enough tribute cards to really work off of that. So I think I'll just go for the Abomination then. That doesn't feel too bad. I could have also tried to just establish my Caleb Menge. Yeah, I probably should have established Caleb Menge. Oh, he's playing Foglet. Okay, that's actually good for me then. So I think I'll just start playing Caleb Menge here. I don't think this guy's playing any control. This deck is not really allowed to play any control. It's kind of a, like a very, very greedy deck. So playing control for his deck seems like very wrong. But knowing that he's consumed is also a bit awkward. Goes Oneromancy, Aperion. That is actually very annoying. <laughs> uh, dude, Aperion's like the worst card for me here. That does not feel good. All right, I'm just gonna establish my Gellard then. I think Gellard is fine to play out here. This purifies itself now as well. So he's playing his engine, I'll play my engine then. That's perfectly fine with me. I'll, I'll gain dominance as well through this. All right, I'll gain dominance then. Oh, okay, so I think he's actually gained dominance here. No, he has not yet gained dominance. I think I'll just play my Witch Hunter Executioner as well now. I think I'll just set up all my engines here. He played his four damage cards, so our Witch Hunter Executioner is quite safe now. Oh, he's got two of them. That's kind of annoying. That's fine, actually. It's all right. It's all right. I'll, I'll accept it. I'll accept it. So what do we do here? We could go bank for Morels. Yeah, but Morels is kind of luck dependent, isn't it? He's playing a weird like variant of this deck. I guess I'll just establish the other Abomination then. Probably should have played it front row. He might have Eardin or something. If he's playing it wonky like this. So Riders are bricked. That's good for me. I'll just deal with this then. Get some coins as well. Yeah, that feels alright. Oh, guy. He, I, oh, he had Igni. Of course he had Igni. I was trying to play around ear or like heat wave by boosting both of them up, but I guess he has Igni like an absolute Chad. Ah, uh, this doesn't feel too great. Ah, uh, that feels so bad. Holy crap! Ah, uh, it's so bad. Ah, uh, the surprise Igni. I, I was trying to play around heat wave because like if he's gonna play like on Aramancy, he might as well just play heat wave. But he guess like ah, uh, I knew I should have played around something like that. Ah, oh, that was such a bad play for me. Uh, that's so bad. I have to play tall then. I still have morale to like punish something. All right, there is finally his bloody Koshche. He's not gonna use it. Okay, I still don't get a pass though. That feels bad. I think I'll just go ahead and do this then. Blow my load on this Koshche. Okay, that seems all right. There is a big ass goal yet. Well, I do have another way to spend these things. I do. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait here. I'll wait. Hold up a second. All right, we do get the poison. I probably should go for the Fistic Trafficker because I over profit with the Fistic otherwise. Oh, actually, no, I wouldn't have. All right, and then I spend... I'll spend once here. Spend once here. God, this is so slow. Go for this kill. Spend nine on you. Now, I'll, I'll keep three for Madame Savola in the last round. All right. Well, I guess we see Koshche and Leader here, which doesn't feel great. But yeah, playing into Igni there was definitely my fault, and I, I definitely shouldn't have played around it. 
are like definitely should have played around it. But he was always gonna have like a tall punish sort of card. This is even enough, I wonder. No, it's not enough. Okay, so we actually make him go... We're actually on equal cards now. That's good. We still have three coins. If we draw Madame and Savola, which we might, you know, you never know. He's, he is playing... He, is, he has played his biggest cards here. He shouldn't have played leader, I think. Yeah, I think leader was overkill there. Oh, no, leader was just enough to win. Huh. Okay. I think we played that pretty well then. We get the Louisa. We get the Graydon. Okay, I might have to mulligan the Graydon here. Ah, uh, no. No, are you serious? That was, ah, oh, dude. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, you've gotta be kidding me with that top deck. We had both this and this. And we missed it. Ah, oh, that's, that feels bad. Oh, that feels so bad. I can't, I, like, I have nine, nine points here in total. Like, I'll, I'll just play uninteractive for the moment, whatever. Dude, that's so bad. That is so bad. Holy crap. That's actually, oh, that's actually gone and lost me the game there. Nah, I mean, I mean, I've lost the game when I, when I, you know, misplayed and I already have, I already don't have enough points here. Oh, that feels so terrible. Nah, like, playing into the Igni was pretty much what lost me that game. You got a 22 plus 2. You got a 24 point Igni. Yeah, this game's over. Oh, man. Oh, if we had Morels here, I think we would have won, right? Yeah, we, I think we would have won. Or it would have been a tie. Actually, no, we would have had this, right, still. So, yeah, this is GG. We misplayed that quite hard. All right, who are we facing here? We're facing Double Cross. Double Cross is a... Is a deck which has quite a few purifies, so we do have to be careful here. Double Slander is an absolute god hand, though. Let me tell you that for sure. Unless he's able to deal with my Executioner immediately, we might just win this round with these three cards alone. Like, that's just crazy, isn't it? Like, that would be so good if we are able to do that. I guess I could keep a Payday. I actually don't think I need this card. I don't think I need this as well. That's... Okay, I'm actually very happy with this hand. Alright, so unless he's able to kill my Executioner immediately, we should just be very, very good for this round. Like, very, very good. So let's just hope he does not have an answer for this. Like, a lock would have been really good, but that's why we're playing the Crystal Skull. Vincent is an answer, and Invo, I think, is an answer as well. No, doesn't have either. That's very good for me. Gonna go for that Slander, of course. Love to see that. Give me them coins. Being able to kill these four point units. This is why I picked Line Pockets as my leader ability as well. Is because this card becomes absolutely ridiculous. It becomes like an eight kill a unit. Like it's so good. It is actually so busted. So I'll, I'll probably go ahead and do this. Get myself some more coins. And I will also bleed this down to four, I think. Oh no, to five. Okay. All right. There's a Slave Hunter. As I said, with this hand, we should just be good to win this round just because of this hand that we have. That just feels good, right? That just, that just feels good. That just feels fantastic. I mean, you can keep bleeding us here, but we have we have our short round finishers. Also, we got a Slave Hunter out. That's actually quite significant because it is a way of dealing with our... Whoa, he's got a leader? He's just gonna leader here? What the hell? Mouth, any hole will do. Why is he leadering here? Everyone has their secrets. Okay, sure. Well, okay. Well, we got leader out of him here. Isn't that just insane? Or we could, I mean, we could just keep going here, but. I'm not sure how far I actually wanna keep going here. I'm not sure if I wanna play Calamenge this round. I could pass. I think passing a card up and a leader gone from him is... I mean, he has Ball, right? Ball is pretty good, but we have Azar. Azar is kind of like an insane counter to Ball, I would say. Alright, that's a lot of poisons. I don't think I want poisons here, to be fair. I got a Spender for Caleb as well. 
I don't think I actually want this card here against Nilfgaard especially. So he does pass, and I think I'll just take the carryover coins on my... Or do I want double spenders here? I do like the idea of double spenders. I think I actually get rid of this Fistic Trafficker. But I do have to watch out that I draw enough poisons for this round. But yeah, we got away quite cheaply with that last round, so that's pretty good. We get the location, which is good. I don't think I actually want this card. Azar is huge to find here. I don't think I need the Fist... Actually, Fistic could be quite good then. Is this a god hand? It It is pretty close to a god hand. The only thing I'm missing here is Jack. So I probably have to cut the payday here. Because fist tech is actually worth a bit. Morale's good. I guess I, I can cut the fist tech. Can I not? Because now, now I have morale. I don't need fist tech anymore. Oh my god, this is a god hand. Alright, alright, alright. How do I want to do this now? I could just start off with Louisa. I think starting off with Louisa is fine. Our only uh, the tr problem with Louisa is like I have to, I'm kind of forced to use her with um, Savola afterwards, so I could also go hideout into Mage. Isn't hideout into Mage just insane? I think hideout into Mage sounds like an insane play right now. Yeah, all right, I'll just do hideout into Mage. He has to like he has to deal with this. If I get two points for every tribute, which I, I do have like four tributes in my hand here, I feel like that's pretty okay. Also, the reason I'm not actually running mage here is because I, actually I'm, I'm I'm running a lot of decent stuff here. Okay, so what do I do here? Hmm, I could go Vivaldi Bank looking for Jack. I have ten cards in my deck though, so it's actually quite unlikely that I find it. I could just like high roll it though, right? Because I do want to keep these. Blind pockets charges on an okay level. I could also just go. I think I can just go Calb Menge onto this. Is this gonna be his highest unit? Or he could also play Defender. I think I go Calb Menge onto this. But he might have a Purify, and if he does, that's actually okay still. There's a second lock. That's fine with me. I'll just Graydon here. I won't go tall on Graydon. I'll just get my seven coins in my bank here. Oh, this is so powerful. This deck is so powerful because of, like, the way you can use your coins as an actual, like, resource. In a lot of other decks in sort of Syndicate, coins are kind of re irrelevant. Okay, I'm gonna spend enough so I can have profit three. So I'm probably just gonna spend... Once? No, wait, I need to spend twice. Thrice. Okay. I'll spend thrice. Okay, goes for that. I said that's a pretty good freak show, in my eyes. I'm still waiting for that ball to drop. Did I over profit? I think I might have over profited, right? No, I had no. I, I had to spend twice. Okay. There's invo. All right. All right. All right. Looking interesting. So that's invo gone. On a on a four. I have one more tribute card. I have two more tributes card technically. I could go Vivaldi Bank now. I still have one spender left. I should probably make the best use of the spender while I still have it. So I'll go Vivaldi Bank. Get Jack, because I'm a god. Um, Play it front row. I'll definitely pay tribute here as well. And I'll spend all of these coins now. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Because we still have enough space for all of these guys, right? So there's the ball. He doesn't have any locks left for things like morale here. So I'll go morale poison. And I'll also use all my coins on leader here to just bleed him out. Spend all of this on these guys. Yeah. This is such a powerful spender. Executioner. This is, like, this card is actually, like, underrated. I think in this current meta, this actually isn't a bad deck at all. I feel really good playing it, at least. Does he ha I don't think he has... So we go... <laughs> so we go do this and poison his Thirsty Dame, which is lovely. I mean, morale is kind of irrelevant at this point. I could go, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So Azar doesn't actually do anything here. I probably should have been more careful with my role placement. I don't think he actually has a way of dealing with Louisa. I think I'll just use... Actually, no, I'll, I'll still use Azar as a three coin giver. Just for Louisa. Because he can... I don't mind if he poisons a... Six at this point. Yeah, whatever. So there's one more poison. And he's gonna get a Witch Hunter Executioner. That's okay. That's like a five. It's not that great. Alright, so now we go... I think we win this, honestly. This is just a win at this point. Like, we just have too many points here. Like, this Louisa is just busted. I'll pay that tribute. I'll get that zeal. Thank you very much. Our one Scarab protecting our huge Savola. Joaquim into a, a measle little freak show. I, I guess he can deal with the Scarab. Does he want to deal with this? Oh, wait, what? Why? What is your, is your last card Heat Wave? Heat Wave isn't even enough here. Like, Heat Wave isn't even enough. I think we, we even if we misplayed this one, I, I still feel like we did. Oh. Sorry, camera went off. So I feel like even if we did misplay this, I still feel like this went pretty well. Like, this deck just feels very smooth, actually. I feel like Line Pockets is a very powerful leader ability with crime cards in general. So yeah, he had one more poison, but that's just not going to be enough for him. Like, just look at the points. We had so many points against Poison Nilfgaard, and they had Ball. Like, we didn't care about Ball at all. All right, we're playing Shield Wall. I've yet to draw Morels, by the way. I've, I've yet to... I've not yet drawn Morels in this... Um, deck. By the way, something I've noticed is like a lot of people. I like I, I at first thought that I was gonna miss Philippa in this deck. I really don't miss Philippa in this deck. Philippa feels very clunky with the way you want to manage your coins and like having ways to just not have to worry about that is just kind of good, honestly. I guess I could keep one slander if I have a Graden in this hand. Uh, I don't think I need the dip in a Pontar. Okay, we have one spender for slander now, which is nice. I like the payday. I actually don't mind the payday at all. Fistic Trafficker can kind of go. Okay, we get Fistic, but that's like whatever. Like he has, he has this Crystal Skull anyway. So this is like mid range versus mid range, huh? Okay. See, this is where I would love cards like Morel. Morels would be so good here. We he would just punish this, but like we obviously have to work for him, which obviously feels a bit weird. But like I don't feel like that's too bad, honestly. I could just go open with the Executioner here and set up my unit that deals damage after I slander. And if he kills it with something, like a Boiling Oil, I'm actually perfectly fine with that. Because he has to worry about this card, there's no denying that. Also, because he plays this back row, if he doesn't have Boiling Oil through his hands... I mean, he still has to stall a turn for his Frigate to go off here. Because, like, if I had Morels in his hand, I could be able to, like, kill his next engine, which might be a 4. Probably a 3, though. Yeah, that's gonna be a 3. Um, but that's fine. Cause, like, we still have the payday to deal with this. And then we could play Slander. And imagine, like, I had Morels instead of Fistic here. I could, like, payday, Slander his next card, get 6 coins, no matter what. Because I think the next card he plays is gonna be 6 coins. And I could just kill this Frigate. But, yeah, that's not how it's looking right now, but that's fine. I'm gonna poison this. Get max points, and I'll spend... A lot here. Yeah, this just feels fine. This is such a variable spender. I love it. Left, right. So yeah, he, he gets he gets a shot off here, but I think it's worth to kill this Tamarian drummer here. We are down a few. I need to actually think about the points if we were to make this up. So this will then play for a seven, putting us on nine. So I'll still probably spend twice here, right? So we're up by... This is 4, 13. Yeah, I think I spent twice here as well. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't do this anymore anyway. Alright, he's just going for it. Okay, that's alright. Whatever. I mean, we get AA out of him. That's a very good commitment, on, I think. All right, he boosts the poison unit. He knows I'm, I don't have a follow-up poison, which is actually kind of funny. I have to pass here. I don't have the points to make this up. 
So yeah, the Frigate and his Veil Stratagem do kind of play well for him here, but we wouldn't have had a Poison anyway to deal with it. So Gellert, Blindheim. This is a pretty good card in this round, huh? I'll keep the Slander for sure. Morale's huge as well. Alright, I'm gonna keep this hand. If he passes, I'll probably just play the Abomination. I'll deny Tribute, obviously. I wanna keep that one coin in my bank. Every coin matters, guys. Every coin matters. And I think in this case, I also start with Azar Javid. I'm not sure how hardy. I think he can punish it if he has Falibor. Not sure if he does have Falibor. The fact that he passes here might mean he has things like uh, what's it called? Um, Visigoda. So that could be very nice. And I think this hand is just very good here, isn't it? I mean, eh, I don't think I need this card here anymore. Okay, I need I need a better card here. That's technically a better card. Not necessarily, but it is definitely a better card. So I'll probably just start off with the Azar here. Azar does feel very clean here. There's the Defender. I think I just play Callop here. Callop seems perfectly fine, honestly. And I, I, I think, like, honestly, I think Raiden is most powerful if you actually don't use this tribute. Like, being able to just destroy and get the coins, like, that's already so powerful. Like, that is already so bloody good. Yeah, so we do this, right? We just kill this. Get the coins. And then we just kind of, like, deal with it with our freak show. Oh, Jesus. Well, he has to deal with Defender, right? So, like... He kind of... He kind of... You got a misplay there, didn't he? Yeah, that's a kind of a bad... That's a very bad answer, is eh? Alright, so... We'll just deal with... You, then. That feels okay. And we still have seven coins here. We can actually deal with his answers as well, which is pretty... Abnormal. Like, look at this value of bounty just being... What? Like, it, like, this is just nuts, right? Now we just, like, win. It's just a win at this point, right? It goes boiling oil. That doesn't do anything, in my opinion. So, at this point, I think I just play Blindheim, right? And I'll boost up the Horson. Dude, Blindheim also feels really good in this deck. Just having an additional spender always feels good in this deck. There is the Seltkirk, there is the shield. Um, and I think we just slander here, right? Go deal with this, right? Just kill it. Or like put it down to as little points as possible. Uh, it's just not enough to deal with it. Entirely. Which is a bit sad, but I'll take it honestly. I think we should just be good for this game. Okay. Well, he put everything into that, didn't he? Alright, he deals with... Oh, he deals with Blindheim. I wasn't expecting that, actually. So, I think I have to do this. I thought he was going to deal with Menge, but I guess he make, he knows that once like these guys are gone, Menge isn't worth that much. Okay. Boost up his Varaxis. Now, this is still a lot of points, isn't it? So, I guess I just try and high roll here. Alright, Morales is a pretty sick high roll. Like, Morales is a pretty sick high roll. That is probably the best high roll I'll get. Oh, we would have gotten Savola as well, so... Yeah, that's why I didn't want to... I wanted to destroy a unit in that situation. And I don't think he's able to deal with Louisa. And even if our last card here isn't uh, Savola, this Jacques is still playing for quite a bit. So he had the Tritum Infantry dealing super damage. And here we just go ahead and spend with the Jack a bunch of points. And I think we should just be good here, right? Like, even if we misplayed against that, that, that was just really good for us. Yeah, this, this game's just over, right? Yes, yeah, this, this was, this was like, really good. Like, we're just dominating right now. All right, who are we facing here? Nilfgaard Double Cross yet again. Can we be as successful as we were? Last time, because last time we did actually play that quite well, so 
Yeah, can we, uh, oh, we get we get the nuts hunt like the nuts hand against this again. We get the double slander and the executioner. Like that is just perfect. Like you can't actually draw better than that. I think double payday is oh my god. This is an actual like busted hand. Unless he has Vincent, this is actually like such a good hand for round one. We just win with this round with with this hand. I think it just feels good, right? It just feels good. Like, we're just gonna slander everything. Like, everything's just gonna be talked about. Oh, that's a bit rude. That is actually a bit rude. Alright, I'll just do this. I don't mind. Man, Payday is so... Bro, Line Pockets is honestly underrated with this archetype. Like, it is actually so good. Like, the benefits that just come with cards like Payday and just slander being a ridiculously powerful card. Oh, nice lock, buddy. If only it did anything here. So, I'm probably gonna bleed this once, twice, and kill this with a good old payday. And there's the pass. Like, we just win the round because of these cards that we had. Like, that's just good. Like, that is just good. Now, we're Probably a few points behind on his leader, I think. So the question is, do we actually bleed this guy? And I think, I think the bleed's actually kind of good. I don't think I, I don't think I like Abomination. Azar is huge to find. I guess I don't need fist stick. Okay, I get double fist stick. I think I actually start with. I think I have to actually bleed him hard here. I think bleeding here is is actually quite nice. It does feel good. We still have like short run options like Jack. Graden Caleb. That's actually not bad, right? So there's the Slave Hunter. He wants to set that up, obviously. But we won't let him do anything with that because we just have that good old freak show just disrupting anything. And we can kill the next engine he plays as well for a good amount of points. And get six coins and kill whatever he plays then. Hmm. Imagine this Fistic was a Graden. We would just win, right? Like, we would just win. Alright, just do this. Kill this guy. We do over profit a little bit here. Only get five coins out of that kill, but I feel like that's fine. Goes Coop the Grass. Oh, that's a pretty bad Coop the Grass, isn't it? We can just kill that here real quick, real easy. I'll probably just play Vivaldi Bank into something. Oh yeah, that's that that Salamandra hideout looks pretty good in my opinion. Giving us max profit as well. I'll go for Sal Salamandra Abomination since it does purify itself right after this turn. And we are looking pretty good here. We can only we can use one leader charge to enable our morels as well. It took him quite a lot to just get out. Okay, so what's he gonna do here? He's gonna lock my stuff now. That's not fantastic. Since I don't have a spender anymore, I might just pass here. Like he needs to make up some points here. Eight I guess he can play his What's it called? He's down so many points, though. He has a lock, but I don't actually care about locks anymore. Ah, but poison. Ah, but coins. Coins, 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 coins. I need to force out more out of him, I think. I need to force out a lot more out of him. Now, I was worried about, like... Yeah, ball, of course, but... Ball isn't that terrible, since we do have the hideout right now. But, like, he played very low tempo in this game so far. This is a moment where I would love to have Kalkstein in this deck. Like, Kalkstein would be so good here. There's Joaquim. Joaquim's actually very good to get out here. For poison. So that's actually very good for us then. Okay. Well, that's a good Morels, I'd say. Probably the best Morels we're getting. Doubles up on the value. That's pretty good. And that's a very weak poison. Okay, now he needs points. Now he actually needs quite a few points. And I don't think a Brathens does it here. And keeping these two in hand is just... It's just... It's just... Grandiosa. I probably should have moved the poison as well, actually. Moving the poison here is probably an auto win, right? Goes Roderick. We get Roderick out as well. That's huge. Invo. Nice. Big cards just to get out of him. He has to get, like, I think he has to put back the the Joachim here and use leader. And his leader is not worth a lot here. His leader is worth, like, six. 
Oh, dude, this feels good. This, oh, this is so good against Nilfgaard, isn't it? Oh, this is just amazing against Nilfgaard. Oh, dude, we have so many counters to ball. Oh, it just feels right. I think this might even do well against... Yeah, that's just a forfeit right now. Like, that's that game is just over. Like, he can't do anything. We have double assay with Madame and Savola. Like, that was just good. That felt good. So, Graydon. Graydon, honestly, did very well in this deck. I feel like the deck in general feels really, really good in this current meta. And it might be one of the best Syndicate decks out there. I might have to talk to some of the TLG guys what they think about this deck. Because this deck felt very good to play like you play this deck properly you're gonna win a lot of games i think so definitely check it out i will obviously leave a link in the description for the deck and graden in the deck can be replaced with things like philippa or maybe even the Red flying redanian could definitely be an option in this deck but i felt graden really put in a shift in this deck as well because he just like is very simple removal he is obviously a bit draw dependent because you do need some form of bounty giving but you obviously can mulligan your way around that or try and high roll with things like vivaldi bank but other than that i feel like Graydon did definitely do very well in this deck and it's definitely a card to be reckoned with uh, a lot of times i felt that his tribute felt a bit unnecessary his tribute worked really well back in the day when as i said the wild card was a leader but now i just feel like he's a very good removal tool that doubles up on the removal basically like he gives you the value of the removal plus the coins of the removal and boosting himself in this current meta doesn't really do much since everyone is running a lot of tall punishes so him just being like a three points kill your unit and give you the coins of the unit just feels so good a lot of the times and yeah that's what graden does and that's what graden is there for and yeah i hope you enjoyed this little bounty episode if you did please leave a like subscribe for more great content and i'll see you soon <laughs>